Okay, I'm going to show you how to add a Kubernetes cluster connector, which connects Harness to your target Kubernetes cluster for deployment or for a build farm for our uh, continuous integration tool. Um, in the process, I'm also going to install a Kubernetes delegate, a Harness Kubernetes delegate in this cluster. So you can do it all in the same flow. So first I'll go to cluster, or excuse me, connectors here in my um, project. I'll click new connector and I'll choose Kubernetes cluster. We have AWS and GCP, and I'm actually going to be connecting to a Kubernetes cluster in GCP, but I'm going to use the platform agnostic connector. So let's call this one, um, I'll call it video. <laughs> so that's the name of our uh, cluster connector. And then we have these two options here. We can specify the master URL and credentials, which we'll specify here, or we can use the files. Basically, we use the credentials given to the harness delegate when it's installed. We're going to do that one. This is preferable uh, for the most part. It solves, you know, make it's the easiest to do. You have a delegate running, or you're going to install one. You just use its credentials. Very simple to do. Okay, so we're going to install a new delegate. We're going to pick Kubernetes, and then we have these options over here for depending. On, it depends on what you're installing or what, how many deployments, or how much you're going to build, that sort of stuff, using this uh, delegate. But we have laptop, small, medium, and large. I'm going to use small, um, and it requires 3 gig, 3.3 gigabyte of memory and one CPU. This is purely for the Kubernetes delegate, Harness Kubernetes delegate. It is not for anything else in the cluster. So your cluster will have to be bigger than this in order for this to work. Because you're going to have Kubernetes installed in that cluster, you're going to have operating system, oper uh, processes, things are going to take up space and need CPU. So I typically almost double these, but I'll show you. So here we have 3.3 and uh, 1 CPU. So let me go to GCP, and I'm going to create a new cluster. Uh, here's one I'm already using, which has two nodes, four CPUs, and 16 gigs. So I'm just going to duplicate this one. Okay, I think it has two nodes as well. So I'll give it a second to duplicate. And I'll just rename this one uh, docuat video. Cool. Okay, and I will click create. Everything else should be fine. Okay, that'll take a few minutes to create. I'm sure you've done this. Um, and now I'll go back to this connector. So I'm going to pick small. Let's look at my considerations here. Here's small. I'll give it a name. I'll give it. Uh, Delegate, shell name, lowercase delegate video. And then you have your delegate permissions over here. Uh, the default here is cluster wide read write access, and that's used by um, our CD tool or CI tool. Most everything uses it. You can make it read only access for our cloud cost management tool. And you can also uh, just specify another namespace. It's going to de deploy into the namespace harness uh, dash delegate. By default, you can specify another namespace, and this is described in the documentation. All right, so we'll go to, oh, I have to pick a configuration. So um, a configuration is a couple of things. It is uh, scripts you want run on the delegate. Um, you can change these and run different scripts for um, any kind of tool you want to run on there. And they can also you can also scope it uh, based on different projects and things like that or different um, on pipelines. So right now, I'll just choose this one. It's just going to install unzip on there. Okay. So then we get the YAML for the delegate. And you can scroll through and look at all of it. You can see it's using, uh, let's see, there's the namespace, harness delegate. And then it has the cluster admin role and so on. So what you want to do is download that file. I'm going to download it into my, I have a delegates folder here. Um, this guy here. Rename it to it. Added a one there. OK. And save it. OK, and once you're done that, you can go over and here's for here's how you apply. But first, we have to connect to that cluster. So we'll go back. Looks like that cluster is still coming up. All right. In the meantime, um, I can show you basically what we'll do. Once it's up, we'll connect to it. Let's see if I can connect to it already, actually. So I'll copy this and I'll go to my terminal. First, actually, in my terminal, what I'll do is I'll connect to that folder that has my delegate file in it. So let's go there. So my Mac here. Drag that over. Just lazy. <laughs> Do this. All right, and the delegate file is in there. You can see it, harness delegate.yaml. OK, so now what we want to do is connect to that cluster. 
in the same terminal session. Okay, so we'll go over here, I'll copy this, paste it, and log in. Looks like it is still building it. Yeah, it's getting there. Not quite there yet. Okay. Yeah, it's not running yet, so I couldn't I couldn't install to it. It'll take a minute. I'll pause the video here and come back when it's up and running. GTK is taking a little bit of time. Okay, I can see that our um, cluster is up and running. So I'll connect again. Okay, we are connected. So now we can apply our YAML file. Let's go back and we'll just copy this. Coop control, apply, file, and then we have that. So we'll copy that and go back, paste it, hit enter. I'll give it a second here and we'll begin installing it. There's a number of things that the delegate, it would install great as service secret staple set, everything's there. You can see your delegate is right here, delegate video, and then a unique suffix um, here. Um, and then you'll have zero and one for the different pods. Uh, the a number of things that have to happen here. So it can take a few minutes for the delegate to come up and connect out to the manager. Um, if we go, let me go to the documentation for a second while that's happening, because it can take a minute. Let me go to the our docs here. And if you go to our key concepts topic, or the delegates topic, we have our little architecture drawing here. And you can see the harness delegate sits in inside your network and it makes outbound connections to the harness manager. Um, and then it, it, the harness manager gives it tasks and it performs all the tasks with all the third party tools, your uh, orchestration tools and your uh, repos and so on. So that's what's happening. Right now it's coming up and it's making an outbound connection to the manager. That's when it'll show up. All right, so. You can do a number of things while that's taking place. You can verify it, and you can see that it's going to receive heartbeats. And like I said, this can take a few minutes. Um, and uh, once it's up, it'll be verified, and we can move on with adding the Kubernetes cluster connector. So I'll pause the video here until it comes up. OK, my delegate installed and initialized. Um, and once really, once you've gotten both heartbeats received, you're good to kind of move on and close that and go back to the connector uh, selection, and you'll see your delegate listed. Here's mine down here, and automatically these two tags are added. Uh, this one is the, the um, configuration that I added, unzip, and this one is made from the name of the delegate, delegate video. So we want to select that delegate for this connector. You could select any delegate if, you, if all the delegates are up and running. I've got a lot here, so I'm going to use the one I just installed. So I select that, and now if I scroll up, I'll see that it matches. What I put in here matches the delegate here, so it's going to be selected. So now I can continue. It's going to verify or validate the connection. So it's connecting to my cluster using that delegate uh, and the dele and the credentials given to the delegate. Verification successful. And you can see it was executed on this delegate here, dash zero. So if we go back to Kubernetes and we go into my cluster, and we go to nodes, and let's say we'll take this guy, and we can see a delegate right here. And you can go in there, and you can see all the different stuff happening with it. And you can look at the events. And it might have taken a little bit of time for the readiness probe to come up, and you can look at the logs as well, to see everything happening. All right, and of course you can see the YAML, the same YAML that we used to install it. A few more annotations added. Okay, so it's successful. Click Finish. And now Kubernetes video is our Kubernetes cluster <laughs> connector to our Kubernetes cluster using our Kubernetes delegate. That's saying Kubernetes a lot. But anyhow, it's all working. And now in your infrastructure um, of your pipeline uh, stages, be they uh, CD or CI, you can select, use this connector to select that cluster as uh, your build farm in the case of CI or as your target deployment for perhaps in the case of CD. And that's it. It's a very simple process. Okay, now that we have this connector and the delegate all set up, we can take a look at it. And you can see the YAML for it here as well. You can see the type is inherit from delegate here. Um, you can edit it, of course. And then also you can see where it's referenced by. We haven't used this yet, but it would display the pipelines and so on that use it. Um, 
and then activation, or excuse me, activity history we have here. These are the heartbeats as it when it was installed. And this would be once it's been used a lot, you'll see a lot more information in here, and you can sort by different days and see the uh, activity as well. All right, and you can also see that it's successful, and this green indicator will appear wherever you're selecting this connector to indicate that Harness knows this is successful, and you can always test the connection anytime as well. All right, and that's it.